Heads up, China just got a new toy. After years of having just a single Soviet-made aircraft carrier, Beijing has upped its military game by going out and actually building one of its own. On Wednesday, the new 50,000-ton, 100% made-in-China carrier was launched from Dalian Port in the country's northeast. The aircraft carrier is conventionally powered and equipped with a ski-jump-style takeoff ramp, much like its predecessor, the Liaoning. It's meant to carry 24 J-15 fighter jets and 12 helicopters. The homemade carrier has yet to be armed and will still have to undergo sea trials, meaning it won't be formally commissioned until about 2020. By then, analysts project the Chinese Navy will have also expanded to nearly 300 warships, submarines, and logistics support vessels. China also plans to churn out more aircraft carriers and is already working on the next generation design, which is expected to be much bigger than the latest model. Say no to safe spaces on YouTube. Support Tomo News at patreon.com slash Tomo News. Beijing's growing military presence is plenty obvious, especially in the South China Sea. What has China been doing in the South China Sea? The South China Sea has been a source of much tension in the region, and China's rapid expansion in recent years has only made things worse. About a third of the world's shipping lines pass through the South China Sea annually. The area is abundant with oil, natural gas, marine life, and other resources, and no less than six countries are claiming land there as their own. Invoking geographical proximity, the Philippines, Vietnam, Malaysia, Brunei, and Taiwan all claim all or part of the disputed islands in the area. China claims the entire South China Sea as its territory. In 2014, their 9- line was updated to a 10- line, now including Taiwan. In 2013, China began dredging in the South China Sea, moving sediment from the seafloor to submerged reefs to create artificial islands. By 2015, there were seven new islets, Mischief, Subi, Fiery Cross, Gavin, Hughes, Kuertan, and Johnson South Reefs. In forming the new islands, however, marine ecosystems were disturbed and possibly destroyed. They were either outright buried or killed by corrosive sand and sediment from the dredging process. Accused by the Philippines in April 2015 of killing 1.2 square kilometers of coral reefs, China claimed it had protection measures in place and carried on with the project. China also built docks, lighthouses, bunkers, helipads, communication towers, and other infrastructure on the islands. In September 2015, a three-kilometer runway was completed on Fiery Cross Reef, with three civilian test flights successfully landing by January. Airstrips are nearing completion at both Subi and Mischief Reefs. Radar facilities on the smaller islets, Kuatran, Gavin, Hughes, and Johnson South, allow China to monitor surface and air traffic more significantly. On Woody Island in the Paracels, Beijing recently deployed two batteries of HQ-9 surface-to-air missiles and fighter aircraft. Rapid militarization of the area has tensions running high in the region. The United States, not recognizing China's ownership of the islands, sent missile destroyers near the islands last year as a show of force. China has repeatedly rejected international arbitration on the disputed islands and will likely enforce a strict anti-access denial strategy over the area once construction on the islands are completed. Chinese jets intercept U.S. Navy plane over the South China Sea. Tensions continue to escalate in the South China Sea amid another encounter this week between the U.S. and China. A U.S. Navy reconnaissance plane was in international airspace, north of the disputed islands on Tuesday. The EP-3 Ares Signals reconnaissance aircraft was conducting a routine patrol in the area when it was intercepted by a pair of Chinese fighter jets. The two J-11 fighters came within 50 feet of the U.S. plane. It flew so close, the American pilot was forced to descend about 200 feet to avoid collision. Pentagon officials say the issue is being addressed through diplomatic and military channels. The incident comes less than two weeks after the Chinese scrambled two fighter jets and three warships when a U.S. Navy destroyer sailed near the China-claimed Fiery Cross Reef. More trouble in the South China Sea between the U.S. and China. A U.S. Navy warship sailed through the South China Sea this week, prompting yet another angry response from China, which claims almost the entire region as its own. Disputed islands in the South China Sea are claimed by at least six countries, 
The Philippines, Vietnam, Brunei, Malaysia, Taiwan, and China. China has undertaken large-scale land reclamation in the area since 2013, creating seven artificial islands in two years. On Tuesday, missile destroyer USS William P. Lawrence traveled within 12 nautical miles of Chinese-occupied Fiery Cross Reef. Fiery Cross is a 700-acre, man-made island with a 10,000-foot military runway, deep water port, and other military facilities. Given its extensive infrastructure, it is presumed to be the future hub of Chinese military operations in the South China Sea. The U.S. operation was conducted to exercise freedom of navigation rights, reportedly being restricted by excessive claims in the region. China responded to the American destroyer's passage by mobilizing two fighter jets and three warships to shadow the vessel. The demonstration comes ahead of a United Nations ruling on whether Beijing has maritime rights around reefs and atolls in the South China Sea. Say no to safe spaces on YouTube. Support Tomo News at patreon.com slash Tomo News. China demands U.S. plane turn away from South China Sea airspace. China's Navy issued multiple demands to a U.S. surveillance aircraft on Wednesday to leave the airspace over some islands in Southeast Asia's most dangerous flashpoint. A U.S. P-8A Poseidon aircraft was conducting a surveillance flight over reclaimed land islands China is building in the contested South China Sea. In response, China's Navy issued eight warnings and told the aircraft's pilots to turn away. At its lowest point, the Poseidon reached an altitude of 15,000 feet. Footage taken by the Poseidon shows construction activities on the island and Chinese Navy ships nearby. On Fiery Cross Reef Island, for instance, military barracks, a lookout tower and a runway have already been built. The U.S. is now considering pushing its aerial and surface missions closer to the islands. Until now, the U.S. has stayed outside the island's 12 nautical mile territorial zone. Some analysts warn the U.S. actions might escalate tensions in the region. The U.S. says China's grab for territory risks setting a precedent in which larger countries are free to muscle in on and intimidate smaller ones. China needs to be put in its place. While the West focuses on the mess they caused in the Middle East, things have been getting messy out here in Asia. New satellite imagery shows China has been dumping weapon systems on all of its seven artificial islands in the contested South China Sea. Xi Jinping flat out lied when he said China didn't intend to militarize the resource-rich trade route last year during a U.S. visit. Surprise, surprise! China's defense ministry says the military systems are proper and lawful and for self-defense. Yeah, sure they are. China has a bad habit of claiming things that don't belong to it. And when called out, has no problem acting like a whiny brat. And then there's Philippine President Duterte, who's actually naive enough to think that kissing Chinese butt will make them share. <laughs> Duterte has threatened to end joint military exercises with the U.S. in favor of China. What the U.S. needs to do is lock things down with Japan and South Korea, and more importantly, increase military cooperation with Taiwan to keep China's posturing in check.